Hi guys and welcome back. Now this is just going to be a really quick little video um, just in response to some questions that I've had on uh, doing kitchen worktops. Now if you haven't checked out the uh, series that I've done I'll link it up the top here and in the description and everywhere for you. There's plenty of videos in there about worktops. But a question I get a lot of the time is uh, what do you do if your walls are slightly out of square? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop it here, flip the camera around so I can show you because I've got a prime example here. It's not terribly out but it is slightly out so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I get over that. Okay so as you can see I'm doing these worktops here so we've got one into the corner there, one coming back and we will have a return in here but I've just put this one at a minute to check if it fits. So we're propped up on a piece of wood there and we're sitting on our worktop here so this doesn't actually fit at the moment but if I can show you around here that's going to go in lovely there. We've got a nice sort of mill gap in there so that'll clamp up lovely. If I come over to the back, I don't know how well you can see that in there, but it doesn't fit. So what I need to do is throw my jig out. Now you can see, if I go up to the wall, we're nice and tight everywhere. So theoretically, it should go in, but this wall's slightly out of square. So what we need to do is we need to adjust the cut on here. So I'm gonna get set up on the bench and show you how I go about that. Okay, so here we are on the bench. We've got a bit of work top upside down because that's the orientation we're cutting in. Now you can see that I've got these pencil marks on here and here. Now I normally put these, whenever I do a cut, I put these pencil marks so I know where my jig's been sitting before. Now this is nine millimeters away from this cut edge that we had before, which is your normal offset between the edge of your jig and the side of your router cutter. So if you can imagine your router cutter's here, nine mil. So what we need to do now is we need, no, we need to make this a little bit smaller. So what I will do is I will move that two mil away from that cutter, from that pencil mark, sorry, and then put this back on the same pencil mark. So we know that this edge here isn't gonna change, but it's gonna throw us out a square slightly there. Does You can do this on more than two mil, but, I mean, it's not infinite. You can't do it if it's like half an inch out or whatever, it's gonna really fry it out. So a couple of mil, this will fry it round enough just to close them gaps up. Okay, so here you go. You can see that I'm back on my pencil mark in there and I've moved that one a couple of mil away. So it's gonna throw our jig out enough. So I'll get this cut and I'll take it back in and I'll show you what it's like. Okay, so there you go. As you can tell, that's not bolted up yet, but that's gonna bolt up lovely. Just by moving that jig over a couple of mil, it's got this bit of work top in. So, like I said, this won't work on massive gaps. If the gaps are really, really bad, it might be worth considering going with like a square edge work top or something like that. But for that couple of mil to move it over, that works really, really well. Things to bear in mind when you're doing this is just to make sure you move it the right way. Don't move it the wrong way because uh, then you could bugger up your bit of worktop. What I tend to do is not cut my worktop to length until I'm happy with my joint. Not always possible because obviously it won't fit in the gap. But um, yeah, just take your time. Got any questions on this, let me know. There's a full playlist on how to do kitchen worktops that's right here. So go and check that out if you haven't done already. I'm going to leave it there, guys. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Cheers.